Welcome to today's video and we're continuing on with GG83 versus everyone and this is the mage push following on from all the footage we've been covering so far so if you've not familiarized maybe just check out you know one of the previous videos and you'll get a bit of understanding on what's going on right here but let's have a deep dive into this TA push into the middle to take control of zone 4. Hello guys, yes, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneak, and we're here today with the boys in Zone 4, Division 2005, GG83 versus everyone, which is TA, EXXL, EXG, and Sky, all at the same time during this footage, which is all on the first day that was all occurring, because we streamed the first 11 hours of this bad boy. And what we're going to be witnessing, basically, is, as you can see, TA winning this beginning push. So they did build, as you guys know, the flags to the east, allowing them to then, uh, you know, build and start to destroy GG83's zone. So we can see here GG83 actually um, having to take care of a TA bear because TA dropping down that giant bear to create space, allowing their troops now to obviously come into the field. So if we're looking at this, we can see the progress on both of these fortresses that's kind of the thing you need to keep paying attention to because the more obviously builders they have on the flag and the keep is going to allow them to obviously get some really really good pushing power because it allows them to build the next flag forward and keep pushing down and destroying enemy players flags so gg3 have to obviously deal with first this little nasty bear because this bear is obviously creating space and that space is being allowed allowed to TA to hold this nice formational line. Obviously, if anyone is coming towards them, we're going to defend and hopefully what you need to pay attention to is them builders like we've been saying. If we see a push from GG83, what you're going to have to be paying attention to is mainly those builder numbers. We can see basically the one on the right side, which is the cannon flag, having basically maximum builders, while there's only around 50% on that keep. So that is what we're going to be rolling with and seeing if these guys can continue to destroy, obviously, these flags. Because this is a long clip, but we're going to do the nice, beautiful time-lapse feature that we've been doing on these videos that you guys have been enjoying. So you know at the top, obviously in the little corner here if you just look we're at 14.59 so you know um, how many minutes we're going to be skipping through here as we go through but you can see TA doing a fantastic job already going through a minute now into the second minute going into the third fourth and now it's really nice if we stop after five minutes here again the giant bear still doing its job really really well but more importantly Look at this, we've got both flags now on this push power where you're getting almost a full surround, which is great to see. So you can see the ambition here by TA. And this is most likely because of all the fighting obviously GG83 have had to do. And at the same time as this push, they're going to be having to deal with something else, which we're going to showcase in the road right videos where GG83 are going to be fighting Sky and EXL. Honestly, to the north of this fight, but that's going to be in its own video and you'll enjoy that when it comes out, right? So now we can see the bear kind of out of its own bit, you know, it's, it's still there, but it's really, really low. We can see now EXG at the top here, actually providing some support to the TA family, which is really great. But GG, GG is starting to start to appear, right? They're coming through their little murder ball. They are trying to peek through to hit these front out of position marches to then hopefully target down onto these builders, right? So now if we go and time lapse it again, we're going to start seeing that bear really, really low. And now it's disappeared. So now GG feeling confident. We've got an infantry player here now on GG side trying to push forward while this bear is really low. And guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't good enough. So they've already backed up until this bear is dealt with. And you can see that's the pattern, right? So now if you look, it's at 15.07. We keep going forward. We keep going forward. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. And we're already now at 15.10, which is now basically 10 minutes of destruction and that is what i kind of want to showcase here really really powerful 
pushed by TA, right? They're on the offense. They do have all the allies. The mate G uh, GG in the middle of this little zone, but they are trying to destroy both of these at the same time. So they know if they can do this in really fast fashion, they're gonna have a really good chance at basically dropping their own flag here and then obviously pushing um, west to then destroy another GG flag and stop all of that connection they have towards the north side where they're fighting these Sky members, right? So we can fast forward this now and we're gonna go and get into a time lapse because now we're gonna start seeing a little bit of a change, right? Because now after around 15 minutes, worth of um, destruction, you can now see GG appearing. So GG and now on this top side, you can see the murder ball nicely tight at the beginning with only very small troops here. But if we just do a nice little shift here, you can start to see even more, right? We've got even more GG members now appearing and you can see the number of builders reacting. So instead of having a nice full circle, you can see now it's gone to about 50% on that, but they're maintaining the 100% build or destruction on the flag, which I really like to see here, right? And you can see GG now trying to address this situation. So if you time lapse it again, we can see now the keep is not being hit. And I'm not gonna lie, like we've not talked about the keep much yet, but this keep is in a fantastic position here because this little keep right here is just enough range from this flag. So as you can imagine, if you are inside this keep, your range is gonna area of effect hit these um, builders. So it is on top of TA to basically have their troops inside this area and obviously trying to destroy this to cause it to target them and not to target the destruction crew on this flag, right? But for GG, it's a magnificent keep, right? This keep is allowing them to get so many free merits while being inside, especially if you're a T5 player, you're gonna be hitting all across. It could aim anywhere in these three directions, right? And either one, you're gonna be happy. And the mild merits I've seen some reports on this was absolutely ridiculous, right? So we can see now GG83 now pushing back. So they've got the support of the keep, so they've got the keep and now their main open field. And this changes things, right? This changes a lot of things on the open field, which you might not be aware of, because now this keep is actually being supported by this murder ball. So you've got basically this like almost double fire from these murder balls and this keep, which is really great to see. Actually, you know, I think how the Call of Dragons devs kind of intended keeps and maybe turrets and barricades in the initial thought process to be used. Like, just this building that you kind of put down and you're using it as a support structure in this small skirmish, right? And if you have the field presence for it, you're gonna get more of an advantage out of it. And I think that is what they're trying to achieve. And so far, I think everyone can agree, these keeps have honestly the best building, which feels the most balanced in the game, right? You can destroy them pretty easily. You can obviously build them pretty easily, but you can also, while you're inside with your you know, alliance tech, you can actually deal some good damage. And now you can see with that support of the keep, now GG83, look at this. It's pushing all the way through and protecting now this flag here. So it just showcases here why I wanted to go over this little time lapse period of this footage, right? Because when we go into this next clips here, you're gonna see this fight continuing on. So now we have this fight continuation and it's just the fact that you have, again, this flag now not being pressured, it's not being pressured by even the keep and now TA of him to go back and recognize this is a potential threat. And I like this, right? We can see that TA and EXG understand the threat of GG83. And if they step over, you know, over to the line maybe, or if they try and pretend they've got, you know, more power than they are, or they're a bit more egotistical than they think, you know, and they're out of position, they will die. And I like the fact that they recognize this. They recognize they need to reposition. And this TA murder ball is really deep back, but they're still on the territory. They're still threatening that that we're gonna push you and we can see this murder ball from GG. And if we leave it and have my hands up here while the camera and stuff is online, you notice that 
you can see them maintaining these positions. And this is what we are talking about in all the other videos that we've been discussing, you know, with mirror balls, where you have this entire width. So you've got from here to here to use, and you can see GG83 utilizing it. And you've now got TA utilizing the same width all the way down now for their troops. And the thing is, if you can bring some troops to support these guys, instead of kind of leaving them straggling here, you can see what it can achieve, right? You can see that you can now pressure these guys. You can now pressure over the top you can now hit from underneath and you can see ta now getting more units on the field and when we zoom out from here you can see just a little preview of what was occurring here where gg83 were trying to defend their themselves against obviously sky on the top side but it doesn't finish there right we can come back into the bottom side here and this is again only a couple of minutes later if we keep an eye on this time on the utc time 15 21 here and you can see ta holding a massive murder ball and this is scary and this is one thing i wanted to address here because we're going to pause this little freeze frame here and we're just going to address kind of a situation that was going on right because I was watching this live and I didn't understand or maybe they just miscoordinated this push because this could have been potentially detrimental. When you have GG, so when we have obviously the TA members were here, right? While the TA members were more further back and we had all of the GG pushed up really high up in this little area, I'm surprised we didn't see Sky push sooner to try and come behind. So what this would entail would be GG, as you can imagine now, in a tight murder ball with TA on this side pushing on the one point and Sky wrapping around with EXXL to squish these guys and basically just get an absolute meltdown and continue on with their push. But we never saw that. We never saw that, honestly. And it was one thing I was kind of upset about. I was hoping to see some really nasty flanking gameplay. But every single time you would hope to see Sky go, they were always a little bit hesitant or maybe they were waiting for the order. And by the time they waited for that order, as you'll notice, you're going to have all of those GG83 guys already moving some of their troops around to that top side to obviously defend and take them out, right? So here now, if we time lapse this nice, beautiful clip here, you can see when we zoom out, we're just showcasing, look, nowhere is aid nowhere is helping we've just got gg83 doing their thing day one and not even a pass taken on the key pt side just to show you some emphasis you know what's going on and down on the south side during all of this war was tm tm are fighting or trying to build towards the order 66 and g13 crew don't worry we have that fight covered and we're going to make that a separate video but i just wanted to showcase here as you guys have been asking for in these videos a little bit of hindsight what's been going on you know in the background in the war so you kind of understand that we are focused on this main fight However, there is these other couple of fights that are happening in the north and the south side so you understand the bigger picture of the whole scenario, right? So now going back into this fight, you can see GG doing a fantastic job. GG actually addressing obviously the sky problem in the north and now all of their troops came back down south and TA understand this and now TA have this really weird murder ball here very trying to punch through very tight as you guys know and if you've got a tight murder ball all of these guys are easily now targeting you from different angles and you know what it's easier to get a 5x AOE on this than it is to try and 5x someone over there right so this is the point we were trying to make almost like a Let's just make a, a rule in a PvP, right? Just try and spread out. Make sure you're not tight because as long as you are in these super tight murder balls, mages are going to gain 100% value and you can't allow that, right? And that's kind of been the thing we've always been saying in these kind of videos with GG83 and the TA guys, right? So I hope that has kind of been drilled into your brains. I hope you've learned from this. But we can see now GG83 holding a beautiful line and now TA kind of understanding this and they're 
getting this longer ball, right? They've still got a bunch of troops here. So you can see not all of their fighting force are there, but maybe they're pulling them in. And this is what we were talking about earlier with Sky now. So this is where you can see GG83, and they're doing a fantastic job, don't get me wrong, on this defense. This is a 1v4 situation, don't, you know, don't forget that. However, you can see them getting closer and closer over my red line. And the thing is, if these guys go past this red line here, while all of these TA guys are chilled out on the south side, and you can see it happening now, look how close these two are. What could happen again? Sky can zoom all the way around from the back, and now you're going to get hit from two sides and it's nasty when that happens but it's all about coordination right it's amazing to have all of these allies but you need to be coordinated to showcase this absolute mammoth of a skill right so i hope you guys have enjoyed it i know this has been a long one this is gg83 versus ta you know sky exl exg all at the same time but we've been watching mainly the exg and ta union fighting the g8 g83 guys in the middle over the map mainly where obviously they're building towards first so i hope you guys have enjoyed it smash the like comment and subscribe for more daily pvp videos of me mr sneaker and if you want to even watch some of these pvp videos first guess what we do allow all the members in the sneaky army no matter what price range you hit guess what the cheapest member you will always get pvp access first that's right i always give these pvp videos all the members a day or two maybe three days if you're a little bit lucky and you get access to all of this before they actually come out on the live public forum so if you want to check that out just come and support the channel nice little hint down at the bottom and if not Nice little like, nice little sub button, that's free, that's all it takes and all the YouTube algorithm wants is basically a like and a comment. So just tell me what you thought and if you've been enjoying this GG83 war. So until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, peace out.